Hello and welcome to this Bitrisk practice session. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the bounce workflow I use. There are several reasons why you should bounce or you could bounce um, parts of your um, project from time to time. And um, how I do that, I will show you, but let's get started. So this is my little project and um, like I told you, there are several reasons why you, why you sometimes want to bounce audio to um, or MIDI clips or audio clips with the whole processing into new audio clips with um, all processing included or rendered in. So um, it could be that you want to collaborate with a person and that person doesn't have a plugin you're using. So you should always render everything in there because the other person can't really listen to what you did then. Or your CPU is on maximum and you need to save CPU. So you should start um, bouncing to audio and it's always a good idea to bounce to audio because it's one step um, further to um, take decisions you should take from time to time. So there are some um, uh, there's one workflow I'm using right now and I think it's a really nice workflow and Bitwig is helping me to uh, or supporting me to use this workflow and this is I have this um, project with this track and on this track I want to bounce these clips to audio with all the processing in here so one one way could be I just bounce this audio and um, it creates a new a new track but um, on this uh, special track I have a different uh, volume configuration and I have uh, sent to reverb um, configuration as well and I want to just um, take that with me without fiddling all the numbers and parameters after I did all the bounds and, and, and stuff and um, that's why I um, cho have chosen this um, workflow and uh, one thing I try to do while arranging a song every note I'm I'm playing here I try to um, extend uh, the clip length to the length how long the note is playing so in this case I have a delay 2 and uh, when the note ends here the delay 2 is doing some stuff afterwards here, delaying <laughs> and feedbacking. So I try to make the clip as long as the whole effect chain is doing something and uh, you can hear something. So this one thing I try to do while um, producing. So now I want to bounce all the clips of this track to audio. And what I do is now I duplicate this track with um, control D then I rename or append the string audio here so there's the difference I know this is the original and this is my audio track and you see the volume fader is still here the same and on this new track I have as well the reverb configuration automatically done now I click on one of the tracks and press Ctrl A for selecting all. You may know this uh, shortcut from other programs as well. And now I right click on the clip and bounce everything. I bounce prefader 24 bit. That's it. Okay. And now you see the new audio clips with the right names. Chords audio, um, but the new created track doesn't have the correct um, configuration for the volume fader or the reverb. But now I can click on this clip, pressing Control A again, and move those clips one level up. So the newly created clips are now on the right track. So I can delete uh, this audio track. And on this audio track, I still have my whole processing active, but I can delete it now because everything is rendered in here. 
You see the difference is the MIDI note, this is the audio. So to compare it, just play the original. And now the bounced audio. And it's still using the reverb here. So the, the bounce audio is the same like the original audio. And now I can just deactivate this track. And uh, when I deactivate the track or device, it doesn't use CPU anymore. So you save the whole CPU and um, you can hide this track with clicking on this X. So every deactivated track will be hidden. So if I click now this X, the chords original is hidden. And I know from chords audio that this is a um, bounced track and I still have um, original track available when I unhide um, all deactivated tracks. I just do it again. I take this ploying track Duplicate it with um, Control D. Rename the newly track or append audio. Then I click on one of the tracks. Press Control A to select everything. Then I bounce it. Prefader 24 bit. Then I select the new in the new track, one clip. Control A to select everything, move it one level up. Delete this, this audio track. And now I check if I delete the, um, all the devices chain in my new track. And now I compare these two tracks with each other. That's okay. <laughs> Little something here, but that's okay for this for this demo. Now I deactivate this track again. It's hidden and I know from the name, okay, there's still an original available. So this is everything I do on bouncing to audio, but if you um, one thing, if you collaborate with, with someone or you finish everything, there's one step you, sh you should never miss because um, while working on a track, you normally bounce a lot um, things and then you don't use it, bounce again and bounce again, uh, processing it again and so on. And uh, there are a lot of files sometimes and um, I have to deactivate my cam. On the lower right side, on the bottom right side of Bitwig, there are those icons. And the second icon after um, the directory icon is show project panel. And on project panel, you can put in like uh, uh, your, uh, your title, your name and everything and the notes. And you should always use the notes um, uh, when you when you collaborate with uh, someone and put in what you did and maybe some ideas or maybe some lyrics or something, everything you think about put it in here so later when you when you open your project after several years or several days <laughs> sometimes you still have a clue what you have done but on this project um, page there's another page files and on files on the bottom there is a button delete unused so if you click this delete unused you get a list of files that are not used in your project not in your uh, clip light, not in your um, clip launcher, not in your arranger. Um, they are still just on your hard disk and waiting to die. <laughs> so press OK. So they will be deleted and the project you sent to your collaboration partner <laughs> will be much, much more smaller. And if you finish a track and do this at the last step, your backups will be 
much smaller than if you just keep everything um, what you're doing. So that's it about my workflow. I hope you like it. And um, I would love to know if what you are doing, what's what's your workflow? Um, like, yeah, I don't I don't need the originals anymore because when I have my audio, I have to live with it or something. Or you go different steps through such through similar um, workflows or, or something. Just tell me, comment me, and um, if you like it, then I would like to see you again in the next video. And stay healthy. See you. Bye bye.